Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the barren fig tree from the Gospel of Luke. This one is short and pretty simple, so let's take a look. He spoke also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, and found none. Luke 13, 6. All we know about this man is that he owns the vineyard where the fig tree is located. He's the guy in charge of the property, and he goes out to pick some figs one day, and there's nothing. In the parable, this is meant to refer to the people of Israel who were living on land that God gave them, benefiting from his miracles and his generosity, and yet incessantly turning against him and refusing to worship him the way he told them to. And he said to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, for these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down, therefore. Why cumbereth it the ground? Luke 13.7 Today, the word dresser nearly always refers to a piece of furniture, but here it's referring to something called a vine dresser, a person who cares for grapevines in a vineyard by trimming and pruning them, making sure they have the water and fertilizer they need, tying them up to make sure the grapes don't lie on the ground, and so on. Figs come from trees, so they usually don't require quite as much attention, but this one is giving the owner of the property a lot of trouble. So he's talking to the vine dresser, the man in charge of the day-to-day -day plant care, but who doesn't actually own the land, and he suggests cutting it down, perhaps with the intention of putting a more productive plant in its place. In the context of the parable, this seems to indicate that the people of Israel risk losing God's favor by repeatedly refusing to do what he's commanded them to. Because of this, if they don't shape up, they're in danger of being replaced by someone who will do God's will, with their society and their works all being cut down. As we know from history, that's exactly what happened. The Romans destroyed Jerusalem, and even after the fall of the Roman Empire, Rome would be the religious head of the Western world going forward. But he answering said to him, Lord, let it alone this year also, until I dig about it and dung it. Luke 13.8 the vine dresser suggests a few things he could try to see if he can get the tree to produce fruit. There were some blessings that the people of Jerusalem hadn't been given, and sure enough, Jesus comes and brings those blessings with him. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, storms are calmed, loaves and fish multiply, water is changed into wine, money is drawn out of fish, and even the dead come back to life. Everything, absolutely everything that God could have done to remind the Jews of who he is and what he has to offer them, he did through Jesus, his son. Many people, sure enough, turned and became Christians, and they went on to create the most successful civilization of all time. However, a lot of them didn't convert or turn away from their evil doing. And if happily it bear fruit, but if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Luke 13, 9 the vine dresser gives it his best shot, but sometimes, no matter how much you may care for a tree, there is just no way to get through to it, and it continues to be obstinately unfruitful. Then, to keep from wasting the land and being unfair to the faithful, it's got to be removed. That's life. Next, the wise and foolish builders. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.